Welcome to another episode of Youth Lounge. Today joining us, we have Mez, Paul, Dan, and Father Mark. So on this episode of Youth Lounge, we'll be discussing um, courage and what that means to a Christian um, and, and how exactly do we show courage. So just to start us off, the first question we'll be talking about is um, what is courage and why is it important for us men in the church to have courage? I think I'll start. Um, so I think if you look at courage from a Christian perspective, I guess, um, it sort of links in with faith. So um, if you look at all the saints um, and the stories, particularly the, the martyrs, so St. George and St. Mina, um, they were martyrs and they were courageous in the face of um, you know, persecution from people around. And, and they, they had that faith in Christ and they were courageous and, and they didn't fear the consequences of standing up for Christ. So I think in terms of a, a Christian perspective, I guess, it links in really well with faith so that you, you have faith in, in God and, and trust and know that you know whatever you do, whether it is in the face of persecution and wars as the time of those saints, or whatever it is in, in modern day times, um, we're courageous and we have the faith that God will uphold us. So do you think you can have faith without courage? Can, can you have, say, like at some kind of level faith, but not be courageous? What do you think? I think the two go hand in hand. So I think um, someone that, that has very strong faith, um, they, they, they'll certainly have um, a degree of courage as well. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what, what everyone else thinks. I think courage is an active virtue, so I think it's something that you choose to do. So we're not, we might not always be courageous in what we do, but I think it's something that we can employ in times of adversity and in, in the face of trouble. So we can choose to be courageous. And I think that's what God, God called when he said, be courageous mm -hmm. and do not fear. So if we lack in courage sometimes, it doesn't mean I have no faith no, and I don't believe in God. I think it's something that we can actively employ and although they are like they do correlate together, that might not be a direct indicator of your faith mm. per se. So you don't don't lose hope if you one day you're not courageous, but the next day you are. Mm. One thing that always in, in, I find interesting in the stories of the saints that Mez mentioned is the fact that some of the martyrs, when they'd hear of uh, persecutions or, or killings taking place in a certain village, um, they as you said, they they by their own choice go to the, the place where these killings are taking place mm -hmm. or where these persecutions are taking place. Mm -hmm. And we live in a society now where people would naturally escape persecution. Mm -hmm. um, and we see this model of, in the history of the church where you have saints going after it. And so um, what level of, of courage is that? Again, like you said, driven by a tremendous faith that yeah. they're almost seeking, like you said, the opportunity to practice this, you know, this, this living virtue of, of courage. I think of one of that level of courage comes from the fact that that courage is from God. So it's not, they're not courageous and confident in their selves, but they're courageous because they know that they're not doing whatever they're going to do. It's, it's God that's going to guide them and God's that God that's going to do it for them. So I think that's what gives them the courage and that extra level sort of thing. I guess it, that, I think that could be the difference or something that drives that, that difference. So like, I guess we've talked like how like what part faith plays in courage, but what part do you think obedience plays in courage? Is that kind of like the, the start of courage? Like you, you have to like blindly be obedient or like, because sometimes you just have to do it because you know it's the right thing. Like even like we say with, with prayer, it's like it's hard to do it to start to want to do it. But does obedience play a part in courage? What do you think? I think it takes great courage to be obedient to someone, especially if you don't know anything about them. And especially in our church, we focus, at, like we emphasize the confession father and being like obedient to your confession father. And it's, it takes great courage to, un, to know that your confession father is directly connected to God. And if I listen to my confession father, I'm directly listening to God. And sometimes that courage, like it, you might not understand the advice your confession father is telling you, it might not make sense to you, but take, that's where the courage comes in and listening to him and actually following what he says is like, it's, it's a courageous thing to do. And I think mm -hmm. there's a saying that says, listen to those who listen to God. So by doing that, I'm taking courage, not in the, my confession, Father, so much as I'm, I'm believing you, God, that I'm listening in at, like, through, your, through my confession, Father. Mm. I was reading recently the, um, the story in the Bible of Gideon um, and how he, he was faced with this challenge of, of fighting an army um, that was much larger than his own army. And um, it's interesting what God tells him to do, that God says to him, you know, you know Gideon, you have 32,000 men. Um, you, your only problem is that you have too many men to conquer. Um, and so God asks him to reduce it. First he reduces it to 10,000, and then by the end of it, he's reduced his, his army to 300 men. Um, so you imagine the level of courage Gideon required 
to have that obedience to God that God tells him, go, and with those 300 you will conquer. Mm. Um, and he does, and he conquers a huge army with 300 men. Um, mm. I think, I think we maybe even you know, reflect upon this concept when facing with, with sin and with the battle against sin. Like sometimes we look at Gideon facing an army, but we, we are facing a daily army of Satan um, who presents us with a war, a war of, of temptations and of sin. And sometimes we lose this hope and lose this courage and we fall. Um, you know, it, it's too hard. I'm just going to fall to, to my desires and, and sin. Mm -hmm. Uh, where I think we are challenged uh, by these biblical characters and by um, God's strength in us that we can stand up to Satan. We can stand up against these temptations. We should have the courage to say, you know what, I'm going to be different, I'm going to fight it. Mm. I think that Father Mars like, perfectly transitions us into like, another idea. Like, we talk about how much like, the saints and the, and the martyrs have had these like, opportunities to like, give up their lives to torture and things like this, but like, what practical ways like what everyday scenarios do we have to have show courage like how how do we be like like the bible told us be be like courageous and strong and how do we do that practically what scenarios do we have i think before you do an act of you know courage or something brave and all those kinds of things um you might need to assess what your motivation is you know someone could be courageous in you know preaching to people out of you know perhaps pride you know maybe I want to get someone to church mm. as a trophy to show you know oh like I bought this you know heathen mm. back to church you know look what I've done you know and even say Paul talks about that he says you know like we talk about the martyrs but mm. what was the motivation St Paul says you know though I give my body to be burnt and I have no love you know profits nothing mm -hmm. so as Paul was saying earlier you know is there really a correlation between faith and courage I think so mm. I think you know courage might be an indicator of faith. Um, you know, like we're talking about Gideon, but what got Gideon to that point? He asked for signs, you know, you can almost say he was a coward before, you know, he went to the, to the battle with the 300 men. He needed those signs, mm -hmm. you know, so. But like in your day to day, like what, like we're, we're somewhere, we as Christians every day, young teenage men, yeah. Christians, where, where do we have to show courage? Like what, what's the scenario presented to us that we have to show courage? I think Abuna gave a really good example before, um, we have to be courageous with sin. So, I mean, Pouring out yourself to God and sort of trusting in Him and allowing Him to overcome the sin instead of yourself takes a huge amount of courage. So, especially with Gideon, um, you know, he could have trusted in his own thoughts and his own ideas. Or the more men I the more men I use, the more power I'll have. The easier it will be to win the war. And that can be our thoughts as well when we when we sort of try and tackle sin with our own thoughts and our own devices. And to completely pour yourself in front of Christ and say, God, you know, this is my this is my trouble in all my weakness and in all my lack of ability, I pour it to you and I leave it to you and, and let you take over. I think that takes a huge amount of courage. So that you know, I think I think Mr. Like, raised a really nice point like about courage is like honesty. Like we see in like Joshua where there's like, a very famous verse, Joshua one nine, like be a be of good courage. Like courage the word courage is mentioned many times in that chapter. And it was because Joshua came to the Lord and was like Lord, like now Moses is left. Moses is like a second god to these people, and now I have to take over. Like I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm young. Never led this many people. Like his way of being courageous was honest, and like we know that like the sacrifice of the Lord are broken and contrite heart. Mm -hmm. And like I think that's a really important part of being courageous. Looked over. Like I think something we might talk about a bit later is like the difference between courage in the secular world and courage in, mm -hmm. in spirituality. But I think that's a really important difference we have is that courage is like broken honesty. Like is and what role does that play? Like that broken honesty in front of God. How is that courageous for us men? The funny thing is that if you look like when we look throughout the Bible and the people that were courageous, people, these people blatantly admitted to God that they had no power and nothing of themselves. So I think it's very important to distinguish courage from arrogance in yourself mm -hmm. and um, very sure of yourself. Like the one thing that always strikes me with courage is Moses um, and Christ told him, "You will lead my people out of Egypt," and he said. I, not, not up till today and not before today have I been good of speech. I stutter, I've never been good at speaking. And God said to him, go out, I'll take care of you kind of thing. So he declared before God and he poured out before himself his weakness. And then it's the same thing that St. Paul says. He, he says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And I think only God uses people that are weak to show courage because these people always return the glory back to him. I think Pope Shenouda commented on that once and said, he only ever uses the weak because the glory will always be returned back to God and he's sure of that. Whereas the arrogant will always take glory from themselves and always pride themselves. So we always have to distinguish courage and being courageous
example in ourselves and how sure we are in ourselves and how sure we are in God. So. It's almost a paradox, I think. Yeah. So, well, just, you know, for us to be courageous in Christ, we need to understand our weakness in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really beautiful. That We'll get onto it later, as you said, David, but I think that's a difference between our understanding and our way that we tackle courage mm -hmm. and the way that the world sort of views mm -hmm. being courageous. Mm -hmm. um, like back to like the point of like how the Mahdi has defended their, our faith and courage. Like how how do we do that in this modern era? Like, like what importance they say for example, in the workplace or at uni um, or at school? Um, how is it important for us? Why is it important for us to stand up for our faith? Like not be sheep, not follow the trends of the of the world. The issue with the the one thing I always realize when we come and speak of the Mahdi's and whatnot is we we skip straight to the end of their story, but we never look at the beginning and. I think in the ladder of the, if you read the, book, read the book, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, he always says, be careful not to skip a step because the fall will be much larger. So we always got to look at the little things that the martyrs did. And I think that's why Christ warned us. He said, he who is faithful in little, I'll make ruler over much. Because these saints were faithful in very little things consistently. Mm -hmm. And that being faithful in the little thing consistently is what got them to being able to, like Abuna Mark was saying earlier, like go up and say, I want to be martyred for my for God, for my God. And it's a simple thing. I think the simple thing is not losing my temper at someone who offends me. Like it doesn't have to be extreme. And I think the little things God looks at, and especially if it's something that's against my will, it's something that's not in my nature to do. If I'm an angry person by nature and I offer God my peace and not losing my my patience with someone, God looks at that and I think he really appreciates that because it's against my nature. I have to do something courageous and go against my nature of being angry all the time. So mm. So like there's an element there like being kind of responsible for yourself like mm -hmm. like say for example we we decide um that like we like we're in the workplace or something um like we have we have an opportunity someone say for example encourage us to drink more than we should I, is that courageous to be responsible like or um what what's kind of courage in that scenario like in a scenario where people are pressuring you don't want to look as if you're a, a like kind of like a cult kind of thing mm -hmm. Uh, but you don't want to, um, you, you know, like there's, that, there's that very sensitive balance. Yeah. So what's the balance between courage and like showing people like what our faith really is? I don't think people think you're a part of a cult when you don't do something. And I'll use the Buna Mark story that he always tells us. And when he became a priest, I think one of his colleagues told him how much they respect what he was doing. So mm. maybe Buna can tell us about that story. Mm. Um, mm. But the idea is I don't think people judge us because we don't do something. I think it opens an element of why are they not doing this? It's almost a form of preaching without words. Like, mm. so. Yeah, well, I think it's like, like you're saying, it, it, is a bit, it does really quite a bit of courage because it makes you a bit different. And you know, if you, whenever you feel a bit different, you always feel a bit scared. Mm. You know, if, if the whole uh, trend at work is going out for Friday night drinks um, and, you, and, and, and you, you want to go to a youth meeting and you come out and say, oh God, sorry guys, I can't come to Friday night drinks, I'll have a youth meeting. That makes you very different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get scared of being different. Mm -hmm. um, so it does require courage. And I, and I think we should sort of learn to be courageous and be proud of our differences. Yeah. Uh, because they are, to be, they are something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, like you were saying, Paul, I reckon it, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity uh, for preaching. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, look at what St. Mark did when he came to Egypt. And St. Mark walks into Egypt and some cobbler you know, busts his finger, mm. his sweet opportunity. Yeah. You know, he said, oh, the one God, okay, oh, let me tell you about the, oh, the one God. You know, so I think um, with that same model, when someone says, oh, you know, why are you going to youth me? Why are you doing whatever? Mm. Well, it's an opportunity for me to talk about, actually, I'll go to church, and, and yeah. church for me is, is a big deal. Mm. I think it's easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. yeah, and it does require a lot of courage, and I think that courage, as we've been saying, has to come from God. Mm. So... Even, you know, for example, just fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays or whatever it is, mm. um, just saying, you know, this is what I do, this is why I fast and that sort of thing, that mm. requires a huge amount of courage. Um, yeah, I think we've discussed a lot of important topics um, and I think there's a lot more to discuss. So we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. So I guess we got to discuss a lot of important topics in the first half, but something I want to touch a little bit more on now is like, what is um, courage in like a secular sense? And how is that difference for courage us as like um, Christian Orthodox men? Like, w what's the difference? I reckon it's the same thing, just directed differently. Mm. You know, like you see at uni, those, you know, like alternative left wing supporters, you know, they protest, they block off unis and all that stuff, you know, for like s stuff like, say, for example, homosexuality, you know. Now in class, 
I have to come out straight and I'm embarrassed, you know, most of the time because everyone's pro gay and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, so there's that pressure on me which like like we're the norm. Yeah. Like we're the way society was, we're the way that, you know, we preach what God created us to be. And we're embarrassed of that. Mm. You know? It's kinda like there's a stuffed up car and I've got a mad car. You know, I'm embarrassed to be like, oh no, you can't stuff my car. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't know how that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> it's because my car's stuffed up. <laughs> if anyone has a good car, <laughs> can you drive me home? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I think courage is secular courage, just directed in you know, our belief. And we should be proud of it. But if you say you think it's the same thing, just directed differently, I think in, like a, in a secular sense, courage can be construed as like you always have the upper hand and you, you're never weak and like mm. you never show any kind of emotion that's real courage it's like like the stiff upper lip kind of thing like soldier, soldiering on how yeah. do, is that not is that not different in our kind of spirituality our sense of courage sorry to disagree my old, but i think yeah that there is like you're saying dave so the the difference i guess is that um like we said before the the paradox with spiritual courage is that you know we're not shy to say that we are weak in front of god mm. so that we can have the courage in front of men sort of thing and i think that is quite a disparity between secular courage where like david's saying you know you're, you're the never wrong you sort of never never show any signs of weakness not afraid sort of you know i think mm -hmm. i think that's where the, the difference is um i'm not sure i thought you were going to disagree that my car wasn't stuff <laughs> <laughs> um no i think even like, even in school it takes the teachers always taught us that it takes courage to admit you're wrong mm. you know and mm -hmm. even secularly people but I think Respect that, that the conception is changing. I think that's like that's not like the further we move, the more it's about like yeah, like not not showing that kind of emotion. I reckon society portrays something, mm. but individually, everyone believes in something else. Mm. I think the whole picture is oh, you have to be strong and there's motivation, but individually, everyone would respect someone who acknowledges that they're wrong, mm. if that's the reality of it. There's this whole objective truth, uh, subjective I guess that's true in the idea of like, like you say like people dealing with depression are always encouraged to be psychologists and like tell them what you're upset about. Yeah, and exactly. I guess at the root of it, medically, which like everything's scientific, then in that sense, like people do recognize that you have to talk about it, you have to admit that this is upsetting you and that's the only way really to function as a human being. Mm -hmm. And you, you, I think you mentioned at the start, Dave, it's an honest and contrite heart. That's, that's, that's what it stems from. So you're honest with yourself, you're honest with God. And that's where you get your courage from. It's not like you're not going to put on a facade or you're not going to fake God yeah. sort of thing. You know? So being honest with ourselves and, and that's, that's where true courage is. Mm. Knowing yourself and to be truly courageous, knowing where your weaknesses are, knowing where your strengths are, that's, that's sort of true courage. Flowing on from that, we've discussed like a paradox earlier. Is it a paradox? Or like, can humility and courage coexist? Is that a paradox? Or? I think it takes great courage to be humble. Um, like yeah. As we said earlier, like it's an active, they're active virtues. Most virtues are active things that you have to do. And that's why the Bible tells us to be clothed with humility. We put on humility when we wake up, not I'm born humble, because no one really is born humble. I think humility in essence, and if you think about what humility is and what humility does, it, it's very courageous. Humility accepts um, criticism very, very well. Like it takes it very nicely and it's like happy to accept criticism on behalf of God, you know? And if you're persecuted on behalf of God, you take it well because you're a humble person. And that's courageous. It's courageous to keep your mouth shut when you know you've done the wrong thing. You know, mm -hmm. in the world we're taught no argue. Even when you're wrong, stick to your guns. You'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. So that's I think that's the disparity between the two. Um, so how do we show people that like our kind of courage, like, still comes out on top in a scenario where, for example, someone else has done the wrong thing, you take the blame and you cop it. Like, how do we show people that they'll end up on like, how how is that like, made clear? Like our kind, like a spiritual courage is the better alternative. That sounds kind of contradictory. It's like, if I understood you correctly, it's kind of like, how do I let the person know that I'm only supporting <laughs> because I'm better than them? <laughs> you know, that's kind of how it sounds. So I think maybe, I think the first step, kind of, you know, even God said it. He, said, he didn't say the first rule is to love your neighbor. The first one is to love God hmm. and then love your neighbor. So maybe let's focus on ourselves in our relationship with God mm -hmm. more than trying to you know convert people or get people mm -hmm. close to us because I think if we focus more on God naturally yeah. you know an effect is going to be that yeah. people are drawn close to God and God know. glorifies God brings to light that courage without you ever having to um, yeah. to show it and yeah. mention it by words and 
I think you just look out through all the saints and all of them, none of them specifically said, I'm being courageous on behalf of God. Some of them always tried, went to like extreme lengths to hide how courageous they are. But God brings light to them, you know, mm -hmm. and he who humbles himself, God will lift up kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I don't think we need to worry so much about how people see our courage because God somehow, the, the, when the light shines, he shines and people see. Yeah. And uh, again, we don't do it for ourselves. It's which way we direct our courage and we direct it up kind of thing. I think you guys are sort of are heading down a track, which is, which is really interesting, uh, which is to follow the model of Christ. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if we were to take um, the events of Christ's final week on earth, uh, where he was faced with a lot of difficulties, um, being arrested, um, being put on trial, standing before Pontius Pilate, uh, being whipped, being sent to carry the cross, um, hung on a cross. Uh, all these events, you know, you, you could ask, uh, where, where is the courage in all of that? Mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the Holy Week services, we sing, to you is the power, the glory and the honour forever. Mm -hmm. And so, where is the power where was the courage seen? Did he, did he stand up Pontius Pilate or did he turn back and stop the, the soldiers from arresting him? It was the opposite. He, he willingly um, gave himself, but as you said then, he, he continued showing love throughout the whole process, uh, sacrificing himself for the other. Um, and I think that's, that's the, the real paradox, that, that courage sometimes is not standing up for yourself and defending yourself and mm -hmm. putting someone down and showing them who, it's, it's in fact the opposite, which is to serve them, to wash their feet, to love them. Mm -hmm. And that's the true courage, and that's the model that Christ has set for all of us. I think, yeah. There you go. I think one thing that always gets me about Christ is that, and when we read in Isaiah, and it says, he was beaten and stricken, but he opened not his mouth. And I think Christ being Christ, he knew where his power was from. And when, even when Pilate told him, do you know the power I have? He said to him, no power you have wasn't given to you from above. And that surety in God, like, like he was sure in the power that came and where it came from, let him keep quiet because he knew that God bring, brought it mm -hmm. to light. So just touching on that, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say I agree with both. And I think the beautiful thing about Christianity is that, that difference, that paradox, as we say, that, you know, you look at Christ's mission on earth and what Christ came out. He was beaten. He died. Mm -hmm. He was faced with failure, ridicule, persecution, whipping. And what came out of that? Salvation, eternal life, and um, you know the perfect example of humanity, sort of thing. So I think that that idea um, is a sort of you know it's a symbol for Christianity in itself that the way that we go about things and the way that God works is different to the way that the world sees things. So mm -hmm. the world's model of courage or the world's model of a courageous man is quite the opposite to the way that mm -hmm. God works and the way that He sh shines courage, as He's saying, Paul. Um, as the courage sort of shines through our actions sort of thing. I think like, yeah, like we've really looked at like this model of, of courage and how to apply it practically. And I think something we can, we can ask Father Mark, like in this, like we're in like a very secular society now and a lot of outside influences and temptations which didn't exist before. Um, in terms of like how to like teach a Sunday school class or even more practically like bring up a family, your kids, what importance does our spiritual courage have in this kind of generation, this newer generation with technology and, and openness of of things which were never acceptable for. Like how do we bring up our kids or teach our Sunday school kids in this mm. kind of environment and be courageous in that? Mm. Yeah, look, I, I think Christ sort of um, you know, spoke about this where he, when he said that you, you're faced with two paths in life. Uh, one is really wide and easy and one is narrow. You know, one is the wide gate, one is the narrow gate. One is the easy path, one is the difficult path. Um, and so when we're speaking about courage, I think it's, it's training ourselves to have the courage to walk that narrow path, to choose the narrow gate. And, and so it comes down to choices, that I need to have the courage to make the right choices, which are often difficult, um, because everyone's walking down the wide gate. It looks easy, it looks pleasurable, it looks um, more simple. Um, why should I, I struggle to go through that narrow gate? But, but I, I really believe that, although Christ spoke of it as a narrow gate, it's just narrow at the beginning. Once you're in, you see its beauty, you see its joy, all the spiritual pleasures come, you find it as if it's, it's a really open path. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I, I think it's a matter of training ourselves, our children, our church, to make the right choices, um, because we are faced with these choices every single day. Mm -hmm. um, even the Old Testament, uh, God says that I, I present before you uh, death or life, and, and you choose. Mm -hmm. So let us have the courage to make these, these right choices. And, 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 
And does that courage like apply to the church as a whole? Like say for example, like there's always always like in our church these sin and meetings of uh, changing rules. Like what what part does courage have in like keeping tradition? Like mm. is that part of is is courage a part of keeping tradition? Like mm. not giving in to like the, what what the world is like kind of pushing our traditional ways to? Mm. Yeah, look, I, I think um, of course the church is is ruled by God. Mm. Um, its authority comes from uh, the Bible and church tradition and and so nothing in society would ever sway the church or should never sway the church mm. and I think we're, we're quite privileged in the Coptic Orthodox Church to be one of the the, the strongest churches that holds to the truth of, of, of Christ's commandments and his word and the Bible and um, I remember um, a situation in Egypt when um, there was a uh, a man who who left his wife and, and the church didn't issue him with a divorce and he went to court to sue the church mm. and the court issued this ruling that the the church must issue this man with a divorce and then uh, they all all the cameras flocked to Pope Shenouda at the time uh, to see his response and they said to, to said to the Pope your holiness have you heard the ruling of the of the courts the court is is, is commanding that the church issue this man a divorce and I remember Pope Shenouda, sitting on a table, said, nothing would ever make me break the commandments of the Bible. And he hit the table with his fist. You know? mm. So, so I, think, I think we're quite fortunate that we're living in, in the Coptic Orthodox Church, which is a strong church that holds to these traditions. The church can change according to what's required, but never against the Bible. So a small question, like maybe we can answer, just to kind of wrap things up, is um, something he says, part of good courage is to be aware that God, um, of, be aware of God, myself and my neighbor. So how can we be aware of God? And like, how do we make that make us courageous? Like, how do we keep God in our lives always, keeping him at the front of our minds so that, as Abuna said, that like making the hard, small and big decisions, what's a way we can keep God in our lives? Like be aware of God, have him inside of us so that we can always be ready to first bring this question and then make the right decision. I think maybe if you understand God, then you'll start realizing what's actually at stake. You know, if there's a girl you kind of like, but you can't work up the courage to ask her out, then you probably don't like her enough, you know? But if there's a girl who like, oh, I don't care if I'm gonna get rejected, man, I don't care if I'm gonna get embarrassed, like just, just the thought that like I can, you know, just be with her, like even though the chances are really small, I'm still gonna do it. You get all this courage. Sounds like a man talking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too fun that one percent. Oh, I don't want to leave the analogy there. <laughs> so you know, maybe if we realize if you taste, you know, God, you know, here, and we realize that He's what's at stake, you know, heaven and salvation, you know, there's hellfire if we don't, you know, do what we're commanded to do, then having courage, it doesn't become courageous. It becomes. Mm -hmm. A command, something that I want to do, because I don't want to suffer those consequences, or I want to have those rewards. Mm. Yeah, beautiful thing. Well, I, like on the weekend, we just prayed the mass with Father Elijah, his first mass, and someone was asking the fathers of Saint Mark's, like, the the new priests, they're, they're really young, you know, they're very successful. Do they feel like they're giving up a lot? And Father Elijah said something beautiful to, like, in response, he was saying, when I have, like, if I marry one girl out of five sisters, I don't feel like I've sacrificed the other four sisters because I'm really in love with the one girl. So essentially when you're courageous about something, you don't really think about all else that's been gone because your, your, your focus is up, you know, our focus is towards heaven. Mm. And it was, it was great how they, they don't think of so much about the consequences just as like consequences of rejection or whatnot. I'm just courageous for you, Lord, kind of thing. And all else doesn't really matter kind of thing. And St. Paul was like that. He said, I run the race, and he runs it that way. He doesn't care about what else goes around him. Kind of thing. I think Jacob will disagree with Abuna Elijah. Who's <laughs> Leah? I think I think we've covered like a lot of really important topics and that kind of <laughs> I think kind of like a, a summary of what we said is like really important for courage is like our faith is at the root of courage and, and our God and our, our church guides our courage. Um, and then a way that we kind of show that courage is not always being strong is like we have humility and we're able to be honest with God. And I think, that we, as Paul was telling us, like the weak person is the person God uses. So I encourage is always important in our, in our service. And that service is not like a compartmentalized thing. Like our, as like the Father said, like we're, like we're the fifth gospel. Like we, we have to live that. And I think 
that's why courage is really important so that we can be an image of Christ and Christ is really at the root of that so mm. I think we, we've covered a, a great deal of topics around the topic of courage and we thank you for joining us for this episode of Youth Lounge Thank <laughs> you.